trailer start? What do you mean was a trailer start? Right now! Everyone excited to play role heroes? Emily's been working on this campaign for ages. I can't wait to meet Queen Emily. Do you have your characters ready? I think the skins look really cool. This Ryan skin looks awesome. Shall we get started? It goes to 11. Stick with me, and fortune will follow. I've never been more ready for adventure. Who's on fire? I love the theme of the season. Oh, okay, yeah. That actually is cool. So the mythic skin progression, yeah, My they're gonna explain it here. Level 45, 65, time. and 80, you unlock different like customizations. So you can get the mythic skin at 45. I can't believe we still haven't had any random encounters. And you wrong this time. My dice are cursed. Face the demon lord. Yeah, I don't know how this is gonna work seeing this, but I mean like the screen. Let me show you how it's done. This skin looks sick. We must press our advantage and seize this tree. Why did the Genji miss the fire strike? You can't stop me! Big slam. Look at me go! I know we defeated the demon lord, but can we keep playing? Ready. Fix land. Whoa, 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 Wait, 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 wait. Okay, that's sick. Okay, that is sick. I'll talk about prop hunt in a second here. Volleyball? I'll talk about that in a second. So it's gonna be the Sojourn animated short. The animated short. Any cinematic they've ever had is awesome. Okay. I like the theme of this season. I think the theme of this season is really cool. I want to go back here for a second too. Like there's a lot of stuff here, but I want to talk about. I did not expect this right here. So if anybody doesn't know what prop hunt is, okay. Let me go here for a second. He's ready. I am unstoppable. So prop hunt, I, I've, I've played games that have prop hunt that are so fun. Prop hunt is basically a, a game type, and I guess it's called Mischief and Magic, where basically you can turn into like objects and like hide across the map, and then people have to try to figure out if you're a prop or not. So like, watch. You are only human. See that? So like, Kiriko just turned into like a barrel? Prop Hunt, in my opinion, is one of those game modes that is super fun. So to see them add on that, that was unexpected. Like I said, obviously, and, and, and talking about Season 5 and Season 6, like, I love the theme of the season five, of season 5, and obviously there's a lot of stuff stacked for Season 6. But, like, fun things like Prop Hunt are, are, are fun to have, right? Like, I, I will say, seeing the Prop Hunt there, though, was pretty cool. I'm looking forward to that. I, I, I am looking forward to playing Prop Hunt with, like, a bunch of other, like, friends and streamers. And, like, I think that'll actually be really good content, just watching Prop Hunt. Obviously, we have to see how the prop hunt is, and it looks like it's going to be on Blizzard World, but I, it's going to—it's definitely going to show the map knowledge, unless they change the map around a little bit. Now I'm very curious. Now, sorry, a lot of really cool like stuff there, but yeah, and I'm curious on like how like the the, the battle pass thing will be with the um, level 45, 65, 80. Yeah. Anyway, he said all the skins. Yeah, there's skins I missed there, like towards the end. I'm sure the volleyball will be fun. I mean, that, let me see that. Oh, the wins in the end. Not for that. Cool. Here we go. Embark on a mythic adventure in Overwatch 2, Season 5. Welcome, brave heroes. The kingdom of Overland is in danger, and it'll be up to you to save it from the terror of the Demon Lord. New adventures, magical skins, ways to play, and updates are coming in Overwatch 2's latest season. I still want to point out, absolutely love the theme of the season. I want to point that out. For Season 5, players will progress through the season battle pass to the theme of an epic role-playing adventure including new challenges and game modes as part of a high fantasy theme and luck unlock an all-new Mythic Adventurer skin for Tracer. Join Tracer and her friends in Quest Watch. We're updating Battle Pass progression to unlock new rewards. Plus, we're also introducing a fun new story with the progression to some of your favorite heroes. Tracer, Emily, Arissa, and many of their friends have gathered together for a night of fun and games, enjoying a new role-playing campaign, Quest Watch. Like I said, I love the theme of it. Tracer... 
alongside her trusted companion, Griffin Orissa, has set out to explore the magical kingdom of Overland to become a knight. They will meet both friends and foes as they look to save Queen Emily and her kingdom from the terror of Demon Lord Reinhardt. As you unlock tiers in the Season 5 Battle Pass, you will also unlock new chapters in their role-playing adventure. So it sounds like when you when you get through the Battle Pass, you'll also have new chapters in the role-playing adventure, so it kind of goes together. Starting this season, those who progress with the Premium Battle Pass will also be able to unlock the new base Mythic Adventurer skin for Tracer at Tier 45, but Tracer won't be a full knight quite yet. As the campaign progresses, Tracer will become the knight that saves the kingdom, and you'll unlock new customizations for the Mythic Adventurer skin along the way on tiers 65 and 80. It's an interesting change to how they do it, but it, like I think like what people might like about it is you at least get the base Mythic one at 45, which is way sooner than level 80, um, and obviously a bunch of stuff with that one. So I'm curious to see how that goes. Uh, especially on a season with not a new hero, where normally level 45 would be you get the new hero. But now instead you're getting the the mythic skin at level 45. And then if you want to progress and if you like the skin, it goes to level 80. So it's been interesting on that one. We'll see how that goes. This allows you to equip and show off Tracer's mythic skin in your matches throughout the season. You'll also collect new epic and legendary skins, including Slime Queen Echo, Royal Guard Genji, and Demon Lord Reinhardt, just to name a few. And here's some of the skins you can see right here, which once again... I've probably said it four times now. I think the theme is really cool, in my opinion. Um, defeat the Demon Lord. In celebration of this new theme, we have partnered with Overwatch Workshop creator Cactus Puppy. First of all, Cactus Puppy does a great shop with workshop modes. I just want to point that out. Cactus Puppy is also like a big part of the creator um, of the of the workshop community. Believe it or not. So for people who really, uh, just a little side note here. For you know how people have been really enjoying our Overwatch randomizer videos. So that started with um, Danny con contacting Cactus Puppy, and Cactus Puppy said he was busy with something, which I imagine Cactus Puppy was busy with this. And then Cactus said, oh, but there's also a Discord we have where we actually can find um, people who uh, work with the workshop. Here's the, here's, the, here's the Discord that I have, and that's how we found um, uh, Trollski to make our current randomizer workshop mode. So that's kind of how that started. So we actually started with us contacting Cactus Puppy, and then it's turned into having the Overwatch randomizer uh, create a shop work uh, that we have now that we found through um, at Discord. So, uh, just a little bit of a little bit of a side note on that. To bring the first ever creator-made game mode to Overwatch 2 called Defeat the Demon Lord. This mode has a team of four intrepid heroes standing up against the powerful Demon Lord Reinhardt in a one v four team deathmatch brawl. Do you have what it takes to save the kingdom, or will you conquer it as the Demon Lord instead? Well, I guess we'll find out. I haven't seen too much of that. As you set off on your adventure into Season 5, you'll have a variety of new event challenges called Key Quests to complete, which involve playing either your favorite modes or the new Defeat the Demon Lord game mode. Complete five of the Key Quests and you'll unlock a treasure chest of 15, 1,500 currency, which can then be used to unlock your favorite pass skins from the Hero Gallery. So this is the currency you would get normally through the pass before, like to be able to get one, I think probably one of like the legendary skins from Overwatch 1. Plus you'll earn as much as 20,000 Battle Pass XP. Fun in the Sun Returns. The Summer Games makes its debut, and oh, also the skin is really, really sick. Fun in the Sun Returns. The Summer Games makes its debut in Overwatch 2. We're bringing fun new challenges to players, like bringing back the fan favorite Lucio Ball and introducing a whole new game mode, Winston's Beach Volleyball. Question is, can I stack with my friends in this? Because we had that issue before in Overwatch 1 where we couldn't. Um, for rank, that is. If they don't even have that, that's fine. Be sure to check out the in-game shop for the summer-themed skins, including a fresh skin for Mercy that is sure to make a splash. You can also take part in fun event challenges to earn a new tropical theme skin for Doomfist and up to 50,000 Battle Pass XP. Okay, good amount of Battle Pass XP. Lucio Ball, a fun 3v3 sports game where teams featuring Lucio work to score a gigantic soccer ball into the opponent's goal is back. If you've played Rocket League, you pretty much know what that is. <laughs> First to three goals wins. Try to outplay your opponents on three challenging maps with obstacles and jump pads throughout the arena. However, the fun doesn't stop there. Winston invites you to the beach for a whole new way to serve up your favorite Overwatch heroes in Winston's Beach Volleyball. You'll run, jump, and spike a giant volleyball towards your opponents, scoring when the ball hits the sand. Can you beat the heat in this new game mode? Find out when the Summer Games launches on July 11th, which, I mean, I'm sure it'll be fun. It'll be a good time. Why not? Why not? I'll at least try it. Mystery and surprises await. Now, this part I'm really excited about, and I know, like, Prop Hunt has just been all... Anytime I've ever played Prop Hunt with friends, like, we'll be, like, 
laughing so hard. I just I, and and. Uh, we've played a few prop hunt games on stream. It's just something about prop hunt that if it, if it plays like other prop hunt games does, is going to be a good time. I'm telling you, prop hunt is hilarious. Later this season, we're bringing our take on the popular FPS gameplay of prop hunt to Overwatch 2 with Mischief and Magic. The Royal Guard will need to seek out a band of rogues hiding as everyday objects. Will you be able to spot the sneaky thieves? This 5v5 elimination game mode will be available for a limited time starting July 25th. You'll also be able to complete challenges to earn rewards, including an epic skin for Ana and 50,000 Battle Pass XP. So far, that's been, what, 120,000 Battle Pass XP from, like, like playing so far? If I'm correct. You said limited? I know. I hear limited. I want to see how it is. Hopefully, if it's good. Competitive Among updates. Blankies. Competitive updates in Season 5. Mystery Heroes returns. We received a lot of praise for Competitive Mystery Heroes in Season 3. So starting today, we're bringing back competitive mystery heroes. This mode, test your skills to unpredictable situations, your overall skill using the entire roster of heroes. Can you flex your way to the top of the leaderboards? You know what? I like to bring that back. It means we can play some Mystery Heroes Tuesday. Well, maybe not. It depends if we're in GM still, because if we're in GM Mystery Heroes Tuesday, we can't stack with our friends. But we'll see. That is really good to have that back. Um, mystery Heroes clearly gets played a lot, and obviously it's really fun to just kind of go and play right. Getting friends together for competitive. We've heard your feedback that it's hard for friends to play together competitively and our main competitive play modes. You know what? It's funny how I just talked about that, and the first thing is we found it's hard for your friends to play together competitively. We restrict the range and skill rate in players... Okay, competitive play modes. We restrict the range and skill rate in players can have when grouping up. Grandmaster players are capped to only grouping up with just one other player. Playing together with friends is the best way to enjoy Overwatch, and we are exploring new ways to get friends together for a fun competitive experience. So for this season's mid-season competitive mode... We are introducing Team Q, which only allows groups of five, regardless of skill rating, to play an Overwatch 2 standard roll lock rule set, which means I see multiple... See, I see multiple avenues of content here, and let me explain why. One, I can play with my friends if we want to heck around and have a good time. Two, we can do fun things. Like, one of my... One of, like, a YouTube video people loved that I had was where I had four bronze players on my team who went up against five gold. It was a great time. We were just communicating, kind of like... Like, setting up really fun plays. Honestly, this this leads to really fun opportunities where we could, you know, get four bronze players and go queue up, see what happens. Maybe I can have some fun with that, you know? Do a little bit of, like, uh, a little bit of, like, kind of the teaching we have with that. So, I see a lot of fun stuff with this, too. So, for this mid-season competitive mode, we are introducing Team Q, which only allows group of five, regardless of skill rate, to play in our Rush 2 standard role. Oh, yeah. Hero will take more than just raw mechanical skill to help score a victory. Good team coordination and communication will be more important than ever. In this mode, there are no skill restrictions for your team either, allowing friends to compete and climb the rank ladder together. And to talk about that a little bit, one thing that I think is really cool about this is it's probably going to give them a lot of data on how Team Q could actually work in the future if they decide to eventually implement a Team Q, right? So this feels like a step in the right direction to a Team Q. Season 5 Hero Balance Preview. We have some cool changes to Hero ba ba Balance in Season 5. Starting with some adjustments for everyone's favorite climatologist. Maze Primary Fire will be updated to deal less damage, but will now work to slow po opponents nearly to the point of being frozen. Wow. As a tank player, I'm excited. Because you know what? Who is the only player Maze going to be freezing? It's going to be the tank! Anyway, when they reach this state, Maze Secondary Fire will deal additional damage for a final lethal blow. Okay, we also made changes... To playing against heroes with quick kill potential, a little more fair to play against, including Cassidy, Hanzo, and Widowmaker. Additionally, we're looking to tune down Junker Queen's Rampage from causing too much trouble. Finally, we're buffing Life Weaver's healing and damage output to give him more support to his allies and help defend against enemies against that dive. Um, we're going to be reading the patch notes after this chat. Don't you worry. Changes to weekly challenges. Another big change this season will be in how you complete... Weekly challenges, one of the biggest concerns we have seen from players is having progress erased from weekly challenges. Having your progress be undone each week doesn't feel very good, so starting Season 5, any weekly challenges that are not completed by the time the resets hits will simply roll its progress over to your next week. So, for anybody wondering what's going on here, this means that when you have, say you don't complete a challenge for the week, it will continue to that progress so you can just get that done even sooner the next week. We are also ch uh, changing challenges that require only wins to complete um, only wins to complete to now allow all games completed in total with wins counting as two games played will be adjusting the total number of games required to be higher but players will likely spend the same average amount of time to complete the challenges as before this should encourage players to play out matches regardless of outcome to gain progress their weekly challenges reduce occurrences of players leaving matches early okay 
Visit the shop for free items all season long. Don't forget to check the in-game shop during select weeks to collect your free Overwatch legendary skins. Sprint into the game shop from June 20th through June 26th and get the Sprinter legendary skin. Tracer one, that is. July 4th to 10th, you'll beat the heat with everyone's favorite summer treat when you claim <laughs> Sprinkles May legendary skin. Finally, on June 27th through August 3rd, you'll want to swoop in and claim the all-new Valkyrie Wings weapon charm from the shop. All are free. Prime game and drops. Okay, I see drops. I see drops. What is this? Okay, if you have... Oh, this is Prime Gaming. If you have Amazon Prime or Prime Video account, you can log on to Prime Gaming and claim fun new rewards. That was going to be Twitch drops for a second. Throughout the season, starting today through July 10th. You can get a head start in the Season 5 Battle Pass by claiming five tier skips, which is cool. If you have upgraded to the Premium Battle Pass, you'll receive the rewards in each tier and get closer to unlocking the Mythic Adventure Tracer skin. Then starting on July 11th, you'll be able to choo-choo charge with the enemy lines when you claim Conductor Reinhardt for free with Prime Gaming. But hurry, this popular legendary skin departs the Prime Gaming station on August 9th. Wait, wait, is this drops? Oh, this is drops. Bringing the community together for more fun on Twitch. Are drops returning? This season, we are looking to bring the community together in more ways than before. We're kicking off the fun with new Twitch drops celebrating the 2023 Overwatch World Cup. Earn a spray. Wait, earn a spray? Player icon and four Overwatch World Cup home and away skins on the Overwatch 2 category on Twitch from June 18th to July 2nd. So wait a second. Does that mean you're going to have to get... Wait, 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 wait. Does that mean for Twitch drops, it's going to be a spray you have to unlock, a player icon you have to unlock, and then a skin each time? Does that mean it's going to be like... Is that like 20 hours worth of drops? Because usually it's four hours for a skin, right? So four, eight, 12... Is that like 20 hours worth of drops for two weeks? Hey, I'm not complaining. Listen, as a streamer, one thing you will not hear me complain about is drops. So apparently you get you get four skins. So four World World Cup home and away skins. For through drops. So it's actually going to be skins this time. All right. So from July 18th to the 2nd. Okay. Also for anybody watching, we'll obviously be streaming a lot during these drops. If you want to get the drops, you can get them here. We'll also have another drops campaign starting on July 11th. Wait. Where you can earn up to five Battle Pass tier skips when you watch Overwatch 2 content on Twitch. Wait, so you're saying that... We're getting the drops of all the Overwatch World Cup skins, and then we're then also getting Battle Pass tier skips. Yeah, I'm not complaining. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not complaining, chat. All right, sweet. All right, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not complaining. So we're going to get the, the set of drops start the 18th, so this Sunday. So we're streaming on Sunday. And then drops start on July 11th. I'm not going to be complaining. Like I said, from a streamer point of view, I do not complain about Twitch drops. I am looking forward to that, and, and I'm, glad, I'm glad they're reintroducing skins and, like, things that people will want a little bit more, too. Like, don't get me wrong, like, it's cool to get, like, the, the, the sprays and, like, the, the, the weapon charms, but to also be able to get, like, four, and I think they're going to be new skins, right, for World Cup, because I don't think they've had World Cup skins. You're going to get four new skins, and then also, a few weeks later, you can get a Battle Pass tier skip up to five, so you can get up to five levels on the Battle Pass by watching the stream. That, I, I like that. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit biased in that sense, but I like that. Okay. Return in this season is our... Oh, support our streamer campaign where you can give three subscriptions to your favorite Twitch streamers and earn the legendary totally 80 skin for Zarya. I also don't complain about these. Um, as we know with the Brig skin last year, that was uh, unbelievable streams. So apparently, there's also going to be support a streamer again uh, with the legendary totally 80 skin. So once again, going back... Okay, first of all, Me Machine, I know that you gifting the three subs anonymously to mean people. We'll take it. Love you, buddy. And I'll thank everybody here for the subs in a second. Thank you for the three gifted. So apparently, if you don't have the uh, totally 80 skin, if you gift three subs to the stream from July 24th to August 9th, um, gifting three subs to any of the streamers on that list, you will be able to get the totally 80 skin for Zarya, which I can show you in-game. I mean, chat... Obviously, I'm a bit biased in this, but I'm not going to complain about any of this. We have a bunch of drops this season. I mean, last season, there wasn't many drops. This season, we have a ton of drops, four new skins, battle pass tier skips, and obviously, the supporter streamer if people um, decide they want that skin. So, I'm not going to complain about that, obviously. But yeah, wow. Okay. I, that, that Unexpected. Okay, a look into Overwatch 2 Invasion with a brand new animated short. Be sure to keep your eyes on the horizon for what is coming in Overwatch 2 Invasion on August 4th. Log on to Overwatch 2 to watch our brand new animated short featuring Sojourn premiering exclusively in the game client. Whoa! You'll get a glimpse into the action you can expect when Overwatch 2 Invasion launches the following week. We'll also have free rewards when you log in, including the new emote for Sojourn. 
I'm gonna tell you right now, chat, whenever it comes to like animated shorts or cinematics from, from Blizzard, there is one thing that Blizzard does. I mean, it, their cinematics are like top tier. If you have never seen their cinematics, and we occasionally will do watch throughs with chat where we watch all the old cinematics, their cinematics are unbelievably awesome. They have such good cinematics, like really, really good. Also, as we lead up to our launch of new story missions, be sure to check out the news for updates, including the upcoming live stream, news, blogs, and more. So pick up your dice roll in for new adventures and begin your journey to knighthood. There's a lot there that I didn't, didn't expect. Yeah, we'll be having Twitch drops starting the 18th on this channel. And uh, obviously all the other channels that are, that, that are on there. So pretty much anybody streaming in the category with drops enabled. And as well as all the other stuff coming up. So it is time for the Season 5 Patch Notes. Welcome to Season 5. Join Tracer and her friends as they embark on an adventure in a fantasy-themed role-playing game as you progress through the battle pass. You'll guide Tracer while she works to save the magical kingdom of Overland from the threat of the demon lord Reinhardt and become a powerful knight as you unlock her mythic adventurer skin. More fun awaits in Season 5, including our first ever creator-made workshop game mode in the arcade, the return of summer games, and introducing Mischief and Magic Overwatch 2's Prop Hunt game mode. Still looking forward to Prop Hunt. General updates! Life Weaver unlock challenge added. That happens with every new hero. After the next season, Life Weaver, Life Weaver can be unlocked during those for those. Incomplete weekly challenges will no longer reset to, um, to zero. 100% of the progress made in weekly challenges in the previous week will be kept and carried over. All weekly challenges requiring wins have been converted to complete games. Wins grant double progress. That's a good change. This change results in the required amounts of becoming higher, but the average total number of games needs to complete the challenges has not. Developer comment. Our goal is to ensure every gameplay contributes to weekly challenge progress. With the prog... With the progress carryover change, when weekly challenges reset, all progress on incomplete challenges will be carried over into the next week. Completed challenges will still reset. The change from winning games to completing games increases the required amount to complete, but the average number of games required for completion remains the same. For example, win 10 games could take any number of games to complete, around 20 games on average. And complete 30 games, wins grand double progress takes between 15 to 30 games, also averaging around 20. With this increased number of games looks big and scary, the maximum number of games it takes is now capped, and the average remains the same. On fire! Fire returns to highlight your incredible plays with these new features. And as we know, chat, you've seen Gavin uh, in the chat, Winter in the chat, who has been working on this for a while now, and has been, ex I'm sure, is very excited. Gavin also is a big part of the ping system. Um, and obviously, uh, so I'm, I'm super excited to see how this is. Fire returns to highlight your incredible plays with these new features. New state, blazing. I'm sure chat's going to have fun with that one. What's better than being on fire? Being even more on fire. A team's most exceptional playmakers will now begin blazing. Blazing cannot be maintained as easily as regular fire, so you'll need, to outstanding, you'll, you'll need outstanding play to keep the heat on. Reignited visuals and sound effects. Fire returns to the hero portrait in the scoreboard with new animations. Fire makes its debut in the kill feed as well. Catching fire. Killing enemies that are on fire. Grants fire. Fan the flames. The fire has spread to more than just Genji players. Beyond eliminations and damage, the fire comes from mitigated damage, saves, healing, assists, capture and cont uh, contestant objectives, boosted damage, and crowd control. Pay attention to watch heroes on your team are on fire and help them out to increase your fire score. Honestly, I'm looking forward to seeing how this is. On Fire was such a big part of Overwatch 1, and it sounds like they've taken the system and tried to improve on it a lot, so I'm really kind of curious to see how that On Fire system will be, and we'll see you tomorrow. So, that's cool. Matchmaking improvements. Add a new matchmaker fun functionality that should create matches with a narrower range of player skills. The initial tune-in of the system at the start of the season will not be aggressive, but we will be making con um, continual tune-in changes throughout the season. Yep, I, that's going to happen. Uh, I, 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 don't, I, I guess that means there'll be better matchmaking? The matchmaker now prioritizes placing smaller groups with wide skill ranges into the same match, which means solo players will see a lower chance of being placed in those matches. Does that mean that... Okay, hear me out. Does this mean that if I duo queue in top 500 now, my duo queue, queue is going to be even longer? I, I, that I don't understand by that one. All right, matchmaking bug fixes. Addressed some issues with backfills and quick play that could cause the backfill to take longer time or take a long time or never occur fix an issue where the matchmaker sometimes initialize in, initialize new players competitive mmrs to a value that does not reflect their skill players will continue to adjust their accurate mmr as they continue to play oh well, we'll see how those bug fixes are free for all player skill rate and bug fixes um so basically they just fixed a lot of like the free for all stuff here 
So the underlying issue causing incorrect updates has now been addressed, but unfortunately these skill ratings are no longer meaningful. The best way forward is to do a complete reset of the F FA MMR used by these specific game modes. After this reset, match quality is expected to be sub suboptimal until players are able to play more games of Deathmatch. I haven't played any Deathmatch, so. We don't take this action lightly, but it's the best course of the future. Okay. Competitive play updates. Ranked inactivity changes. Players that did not play any matches during the previous competitive season will become inactive. Inactive players do not have a visible skill, skill tier and division. Each role in role queue can become inactive separately. While in open queue, a player only has one rank that can become inactive. Once an inactive player returns and achieves a competitive update after winning five games, their skill tier and division will become visible again. I can tell you exactly why they're doing this. Are you ready? I'll tell you exactly why they're doing this. Because how often do you get into a game and you go, I had a Masters player in my game, I have a Silver player in my game, etc. Why? Because they never caught up with the new system they have in place when they got rid of the Decay. So what this does is it allows for players who don't play for a little bit of a time so they can re-put that player into the correct rank that the Hidden Mamar has, that way you have less of those happening. Because you'd, you'd sit there and be like, oh, wait a second, the player on my team is Masters, but not in reality, because what ended up happening was is they, their MMR hasn't caught up to where it's at, and they're actually in gold, but it hasn't caught up, vice versa. So that's what that change does, and that's what that fixes, so that way when you hit tab, you don't think there's like a gold player in your team who's actually in silver, or a gold player who's actually plat, but the system hasn't updated because they haven't played enough games or didn't play for a season, so this changes that and it and kind of realigns them into the system. That way, when you hit tab, it's a little bit better. That's pretty much what that is. Competitive Mystery Heroes returns for an entire season, so Mystery Heroes will be there for the whole season of randomized hero action. The competitive challenges are also back, providing mysterious titles and competitive points. Competitive bug fixes improve how the matchmaker computes its initial skill estimation, aka, M AKA MMR, for a player queuing for their first competitive game. On to the hero updates. Junker Queen. Rampage Ultimate cost increased by 15%. Good change. Chat, let's be honest here. Does anybody here disagree with that change? I don't. I, I think that is one thing from the get-go that I thought was a bit overtuned was how quickly you got your ultimate. I think that change is totally fine. I think when they adjusted the heal and they didn't compensate that with the ult charge, that's all that's doing right there. That is that is that is compensating for the two times heal instead of 1.25. Good change. Command and shout. Temporary health reduced from 200 to 150. Good change. That's a good change. I once again think that that was causing an issue where Junker Queen had a little bit too much sustain. It's a good change. I'm telling you right now. I play a lot of Junker Queen as a nerf, but I think, like, they, to make it so they don't, like, completely make Junker Queen awful, it's changes like this that will keep Junker Queen playable. I think that's a good change. And keep in mind, I Junker Queen was my most played this season. It just gets a, a, rid of... It gets rid of a little bit of that overshield, but also they want you to rely a little bit more on your two times healing now. I think that's a pretty good, pretty good change. Developer comment, the last round of Junker Queen changes increased both her sustained, her sustained damage and self-healing. Hence, she ends up staying alive and in the fight longer, which was the intent, but naturally her ultimate charges much more quickly on average as a result. True. The passive Adrenaline Rush healing become, becoming more potent has been interesting for gameplay as it's tied to land in her abilities. To bring her survivability more in line, we're shifting some of the power out of Command and Show temporary health gained for Junker Queen herself, which is pretty much explained here. I think it's a good change. Where am I reading these? These are on the Blizzard forums currently. Roadhog, take a breather. Now amplifies heal and receive by 50% for 2.5 seconds after finishing taking a breather. Huh? So if I understand this correctly, you go from a damage reduction of like 50% while healing yourself to then being healed for 50% more for 2.5 seconds after getting healed. We, we would like Roadhog to be even sturdier as he's an immobile tank with a minor damage blocking ability. His self... Sustainability is already quite powerful when alone, so this is more of a team-oriented change. Take a breather, briefly increase in heal and received, will enable the support heroes on Roadhog's team to help him recover more quickly. Out of curiosity, what happens if Roadhog gets healed onanated on top of the 50%? You know what I'm going to say to this? I'm just going to see how it goes. I, I really don't know what to expect with this. It's something I can test tomorrow. At the same time, like, Roadhog's in an interesting spot where, like, even if Roadhog has that survivability, you still don't really have, like, the most... Like, the one-shot combo is still a bit scuffed. Like, does it make Hog better? Yes. Does this make Hog, like, meta? I don't think so. In before Hog is. At the same time, with May changes. Okay. Woo! All right. On to the next stuff here. Magnetic Grenade on Cassidy. No longer has a maximum projectile travel range of 10 meters. The projectile now magnetizes toward an enemy target from 1.5 meters away and chases them from up to one second. Okay, that's a lot closer now. 
impact damage increased from 0 to zero to 10. Explosion damage reduced from 120 to 70. Stuck targets now have their movement slowed by 30%. Stuck targets are now affected by a hindered status effect, interrupted and preventing movement abilities from being activated. All right, so let's talk about this very quickly. This is the counter tracer and Wrecking Ball and Genji. This whole design of this new nade is, to, is literally... Think about this. If you can't use your abilities and you get stuck by a Cassidy as Tracer, what happens? You can't recall. You can't blink. That's the play. Yep. It essentially was... This is this was designed to try to help the back line by adding a little bit more CC to a... Like I said, my, you know how I feel about CC as a tank? But this is why they added that. How will this play in-game? I don't know. You said ads? We wait. Tell chat, we'll wait a second. Developer comments. The overall goals for Magnetic Grenade are sh to shift it to its use from purely damage into more of a utility and change its deployment behavior from a close-range lock-on to more of an aim projectile that magnetizes if it gets close to an enemy target. The previous stuck banner text alert confused Tracer's Pulse Bomb message. So this mobility lock and status effect is being referred to as hindered. So now we get to be like, I just got... I, what, what are you doing there? I was hindered! Hanzo! Impact sound effect now plays for enemies. Visual effect is now briefly visible to enemies when first deployed. Good change. Easier to see Sonic Arrow. Good change. Stormbow. Maximum damage reduced from 125 to 120. This is probably the... I was going to say for 250 HP heroes. This is a, a very slight nerf, but it's, it's so like... Heroes with 250 HP don't get like one shot, essentially. The Stormbow damage adjustment is a small but significant change so that heroes with 250 health won't be eliminated with one critical damage shot. We've also updated the sound and visual for when Sonic Arrow initially lands to give nearby enemies more awareness that the ability was used. I like that change. It makes it just easier. May Endothermic Blaster. Damage per second reduced from 100 to 55. That's the first part. Primary fire slow is no longer always 40%. And now scales from 30 to 50%. First of all, it was only 40%. It felt like it was like 80%. Primary fire impacts now build up to a slowing effect that sticks to the enemy target for 1.5 seconds and slows them for 75%. Secondary fire impacts can detonate this new slow effect Dealing an additional 40%. I play tank. Listen, chat, I'm going to be real with you. I don't know how these May changes are actually going to be because with the less damage from May happening with the 55 damage instead of 100, I can tell you one thing. As a tank player, I'm going to be able to give you really early feedback on how this change feels. You want to know why? Because who is the May going to be slowing? Who is the May going to be freezing? It's going to be the tank. So don't you worry, chat. I will have the first feedback on how this feels because I'm playing tank, okay? Hey, don't worry, I got you, chat. All right, when you're when you're playing, you know, further back is like Torb, I'll be able to let you know how it feels, okay? I got you, don't worry. <laughs> gonna be a swell treat? Yeah, uh, don't worry, chat, I got you. I don't know how it's gonna be. I, I look at this and like, I go, oh no, more CC. At the same time, with May having less damage, May could just not play well. I, I don't know, I have no clue, we'll just see. I, I'll let you know. We'll talk about it in a week. <laughs> Reaper, Wraith form. Can no longer be activated while affected by mobility lock and targets, lock and effects. Magnetic grenade, steel trap, graviton surge, etc. This is how I think it used to be, but this means they have to be consistent with that, and that they'd have to change that for Moira, right? Developer comment: The Reaper and Moira changes are addressing an inconsistency with the interaction of Wraith form or Fade with mobility lock and effects such as Junkrat steel trap, Sigma's Gravit gravitic flux, Zarya's graviton sur surge, and Cassidy's magnetic grenade. They are now disabled, similarly to Trace's Recall or Sombra's Translocator, which are abilities that also phase out and can move the player. Okay, I mean, all right, I, I, I get that. Tracer, wait, did they not even put Moira on the... Wait, they said Moira, they didn't mention Moira. Well, apparently that's happened in the... Oh, wait, because Moira changes happened recently, right? Okay. Tracer. Oh, supports are last on that, that makes sense. Okay, it's going in order of the roll. Okay, Tracer, Pulse Pistol, spread increased by 15%. We uncovered a bug that was set in Tracer's maximum weapon spread smaller than intended. We'll be monitoring the results of this one closely, as fixing it may have a significant impact on our overall effectiveness. All right, yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, at, at this point, I think they're okay with that because they're trying to help with flankers, so... All right, Widowmaker. Widow's Kiss. Scope shot damage fall off, min-max range reduced from 70 to 100 to 40 
to 60 meters. Now, this change, I think it depends on who you ask. I think if you play not one-shot heroes or snipers, you're going to absolutely love this. If you play Widow, you're probably not going to like this. Uh, scope shot maximum damage fall off sca uh, scaler increase from 30 to 50%. This means you have to play a little bit closer on maps. Um, obviously, I think what's probably happening is there's just a lot of players getting one shot. And they really want to try and take the game away from being like all about one shots. And we've seen those changes changes consistently happen over like Overwatch 2. Um, even with the Sigma, right? They randomly just made it so Sigma's one shot combo didn't work. Was Sigma's one shot combo happening all the time? No, but they wanted to get consistent with it. So I guess what they're doing here is trying to make it so instead of having to change the sight lines on maps or add more cover, they're like, well, what if we make Widow have to play closer? As well as also changing the fall off from that. Um, I, I have to see how this still will play. I will let you know how it's going to be on maps like Havana, on maps like uh, Circuit Royale, on maps like Junkertown. You could change the way those maps play. At the same time, 60 meters is still pretty far away. Still have to see how that is, but it's definitely a change, and it's one of the, the larger changes we've probably seen. These changes to Widowmaker's weapon falloff are intended to reduce her one-shot capabilities on maps with extremely long sight lines. The average range, is still, average range to still eliminate a 200 health hero at full charge is around 50 meters. A fully charged critical shot will still eliminate 150 health targets regardless of range. Like I said, overall, it's a very aggressive change to what they're trying to do, but I think they're trying to really get rid of the feeling of constantly being one shot. Um, so instead, I will now be frozen by May. Okay, uh, Life Weaver, uh, general here. Pedal uh, ornaments on his back have had their size and hit volume reduced by one per by 10%. Good change, good change. The hitbox was clearly an issue. Good change. Heal and Blossom, maximum heal and increase from 65 to 75. Good change. At this point, they're just doing number changes to see if it's good or bad. Thorn Volley. Damage projectile increased from 5 to 6. Ooh, we might go from 3 clips to 1 clip somebody to 2. Projectile radius increased from 0.1 to 0.125. And ammo increased from 60 to 70. Uh, honestly, at this point, they're just going to see if it works. And they'll probably adjust these if they have to. Pedal Platform. Walkable area increased by 15%. I'm not surprised by this. Because, like, a lot of time you'd go up there and you just fall off. Right? Like, you would literally go up on the platform and then fall off immediately. How often did you actually manage to get your teammate up on the platform and then they would fall off? Um, area to trigger lift now shrinks from a radius of 2 to 0.75 meters after initial placement. Probably helping to be a bit more accurate that. Life grip. Cooldown reduced from 20 to 16 seconds and now heals the target ally for 50 health. If, there, if the question from anybody is did Life Weaver get buffed? The answer is yes. Life Weaver is going to be a lot better now. Will Life Weaver be good? You know what's funny is I still can't tell you if Life Weaver will be good or not. I can say that Life Weaver will be better here, and they've done a lot to change. We'll see. This makes Life Weaver better. Tree of Life ultimate cost increased by eight percent. Chat's going. What do you mean? Tree of Life isn't that good. It's because they added the fifty health here. They've increased the seventy-five healing. This is to basically compensate for the idea of they've added more healing. So let's reduce the ult cost, and they probably didn't want to make the same mistake they just made recently with Jugger Queen, where Jugger Queen was getting ult so fast because they didn't compensate for the increased heals on Jugger Queen. See what I'm saying? So they start with Jugger Queen, they go with Life Weaver, we're increasing the healing, let's also adjust the ult cost so we don't see Tree of Life up every half a team fight, right? And you already got it pretty fast to begin with. So that's why that change is happening. Developer comment, Life Weaver's stats have been improving over time, but he is still underperforming. These adjustments are primarily straightforward improvements to nearly every aspect of his kit, outside of his ultimate ability, which received a small cost adjustment for the increased healing and damage output. The pedal platform area shrinking is a quality of life change intended to help avoid accidentally activating the lift after it's been placed. Good change. Moira, as we talked about earlier, can no longer be activated while affected by mobile blocking abilities. Same thing for Reaper. Map updates. Hassan, new light and scheme overcast. Rialto, new light and scheme evening. All right, I'm going to complain about that. Watchpoint Jer... Gibraltar. Wait, is that how you spell Gibraltar? I've never really looked. Complexity, compl com uh, completely j jib Gibraltar? All right. Completely redesigned the final defender spawn area. Added an exit route for the forward defender, sp defender spawn. R route adjustments and changes made around first capture point outside of the hangar. Covers in route adjustments made inside the hangar. Uh, did, did chat say that Marvel made a video on this? Because I want to check that out after. 
I'm curious to see that. Bug fixes. Fixed Lifeweaver platform ping and ping VO not playing. Fixed ping stems not appearing for the last seen pings. Fixed Lifeweaver tree and platform from appearing as enemies. Disabled ping wheel movement shortcut for controller. Disabled lock in the crosshair in place for the controller. Fixed performance issues some consoles were experiencing. Healing projectiles now make contact with targets who are phased out. Fix an issue with an ultra wide monitors that resulted in black bars appearing on the edge of the screen. Fix the bug that prevented an end of the match flow not playing for top 500 players. I think I know what that one is. It's a good change. Fix the issue that caused Antarctic Peninsula image to be missing from its in entries in the history menu. I knew why. That's why I wasn't playing this map well. Audio. Due to a bug, we temporarily need to change the audio reverb settings used throughout the game to an alternate method. We hope to have this fixed in an upcoming patch. Maps. Coliseo fixed the map if he was able to leave the space. Fix some hay bales that not correctly block Diva's self destruct damage. Uh, King's Row fixed a bug that allowed some gameplay elements to be placed inside the bus and taxi. Li Zhang fixed an area of Night Market that allowed players to stand outside of intended map boundaries. Fixed a location that allowed Torb to almost completely hide his turret. Nepal fixed the drums that players become stuck on. Nibani fixed the vines hanging above the tunnel. The one just before the final point, having collision and blocking projectiles. Oasis fixed several areas. Kirikoko becomes stuck when using Swift Step. Heroes Ana fixed a bug with Seep Dart, not, caught in, not, not counting his accuracy. Immortality Field not displaying his active cooldown. Uh, Doomfist, a bunch of stuff that I probably... A bunch of Doomfist bug fixes. Fixed a, um, a bug with Diva's primary fire, increasing its rate of fire when it was set to the most wheel. I didn't even know it was a thing. Echo, interactions with Echo. Life Weaver, a bunch of Life Weaver changes here. Mercy. You know, wait, did they, did they not fix the Kiracle bug? I I'm surprised by that. Um, resolved an issue with Resurrect not retaining cooldown through Hero Swaps. Fixed a bug where Mercy wasn't properly reset regarding Angel cooldown entering Valkyrie. So a bunch of, bu bunch of bug changes here, chat. Um, there's definitely some major changes to gameplay, especially with Widow. And, and I think I'm very curious to see how the game plays. I also want to see how May is.